When I go to Svalbard, and what is the most exciting thing is the is the the quiet, how quiet it is. There is no sound, and the only sound when you go off for a hike, the only sound you can hear is either the sea or the glacier. And the glaciers are, are making amazing sounds. And some of my friends are working just to, to study the sound of glaciers, how the, the glaciers split themselves into smaller pieces. I think that this is, this is maybe not scientifically fascinating, but this at least gives you the emotion, the feeling of the Arctic. I wanted to travel. From the very early days, I was reading the, the, the books about traveling, uh, and, and I wanted to travel to many different places. And, and, science, and being a scientist allows people or a person to travel. That's one of the benefits of, of a scientist. My name is uh, Maciej, Maciej Bartosiewicz, and I work on, on basically on climate change and greenhouse gas emissions in the Arctic. And in Pacific projects, uh, particularly, I'm focusing on the methane emission, in Svalbard. So basically we want to visualize methane emissions uh, in, the, in the permafrost zone and from glaciers. For me, the, the Pacific project and the leading of the project was a massive step forward. It's a specific situation if you go to the field in the Arctic, because in the Arctic there is no, it's like a ship. If you go somewhere, to the Arctic, to remote environment, and you have a team, then you need, and you are the leader of this team, then there is the you need to lead, and I had to adapt rapidly. It's a different thing to lead a team in a very comfortable zone and to lead a team in a, in a less comfortable zone. I regard my role as a leader as a, as a kind of a, ah, let's not be a father. If I go with Israel, there is a, there is a few students which are young people or younger than, than I am, and inexperienced, and there is always uh, someone that is experienced. And also there is, there is a mixture of, of genders and a mixture of cultures, so I need to integrate. Uh, and leading is fun, it's sometimes it's challenging. I also try to, as a leader, I try to, if I see a task that is particularly difficult or particularly challenging, I like to be a leader that is active. Or, or I, I, I like to show my teammates that I can do this, so you can do this. That's my leading uh, approach. I don't know if it's good or bad, but I, I just like to show that if I can do it, everybody can do it, or we can do it as a group. In, in my Pacific project, we, I'm working in an environment that is dangerous, and we, we walk with guns, we walk with rifles, and basically the, there's wild animals that can... And, and this is also something that uh, maybe it's not... It gives a, a special flavor to this, this work. If you go out and you see all this landscape, and you feel that you are not dominant in any other environment on the, on the globe or many other places that I was, you can feel that we as a human dominated the, the, the space. But in the Arctic, no. I think that projects like this are nice, but also the, the, there is a inter, because they are interdisciplinary. So there is a broad, a broad range of topics that is covered, which is good. But also they give independence to, to people or to scientists that would struggle to have independence in a, in a different setting. So they open up doors that would not open in any other situation. I like my work because there is an impact that I can provide and it's a positive impact. I also see the purpose of it. On a long scale, I see that my work can, can fill a gap that is needed, you know, in both, both in terms of science, but also in terms of social uh, understanding of the climate change. And I, I also liked to the fact that me, in particular, uh, uh, several years ago, I realized that I do not like the fact that a lot of scientists are always driving this negative information. And I like to, yes, to provide the dry facts that are usually not that good but also to kind of diverge into, into solution making or, or work on solutions toward to mitigating the, the, the climate change effects. We already have the technology to kind of uh, work through this, this process and, and to mitigate some of the effects. So the only step that, uh, that is needed is to actually 
to kind of unite and, and to be driven by the fact that we need to, to, we are the driving force, both negative and positive. We as, a hu as a humans need to make the, the change.